You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. I'm Jamie Migdahl, and welcome to Pets Mean Business. We get together every week, and we talk to really cool people doing really cool things in the pet industry. The pet industry is huge. It is growing towards a $60 billion marketplace, and there are a lot of really interesting people doing really interesting things to get us to that giant number. When I was approached to do this show on this wonderful um, Pet Life Radio Network, it became so obvious that this was the right space for me because um, as a seasoned entrepreneur in this space for 20 years, I always say that not a single day, literally, has ever gone by in those 20 years where I haven't felt inspired by or just really intrigued by someone's idea or their product or their innovation, uh, whether it be on the services side or the product side or the volunteer side. And this episode, this show is really about bringing some awareness to some of those folks that you would never hear of otherwise. And also to inspire you, the listener, to think about maybe ways that you can do more within the pet industry from a, either from a profit-minded place or from a non-profit-minded place. So that's, that's our whole purpose here. So if you happen to be the person who's sitting right now thinking, well, I want to work with pets or I think I can be an entrepreneur or I already do work with animals and I'm looking to just talk to other people or meet other people who are doing some of the same things or different things then you are in the right place. So welcome. And to that end, we've had some incredible guests and today is another example of that. So I'd like to welcome my guest today. This is Jason Feldman. Hi, Jason. Hello. Hello. So glad that you're here. So glad to be here. I'm going to go ahead and share a bio and I think people are going to be totally blown away by what you do. I know I was when I learned about it and, uh, and, and have been impressed with you since our engagement and not true engagement. You know, we're not really engaged, but since we <laughs> since we've been <laughs> since we've been talking and we've been, and my company has been learning about you, it's been really it's we're very impressed. So so Jason Feldman, everybody, is the owner of Chicago Pet Friendly Real Estate at Related Realty. And Jason, as he'll describe to you, he became keenly aware of these limitations that are presented by being a pet owner as you're looking for real estate. And so Jason saw a niche, a niche, a niche that really his understanding that finding the right pet-friendly home is just as important as the budget or the number of bedrooms, size of backyard. And that's how Jason sets himself apart from other real estate agents. He is Chicago-based. So for those of you listening in other areas of the country or world, he will be able to refer someone to you potentially, but he's not going to, I don't think you're flying out to like San Diego, are you? Or would you? Oh, it really depends on if they're going to fly me first class or not. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) No, Chicago only, please. Okay, okay, Chicago only. Be really important to say. But this is, again, another idea, right? So we're talking to Jason because he has such a unique space in the pet industry that that's that's again why we brought him up here to uh brought him on so we can talk about that so what part of what jason's process is is that he and he'll talk about this is he has his clients actually fill out a detailed pet questionnaire um learning about the breed of the dog and the animal's weight and size and then he uses that information to find prospective properties and then verifies the pet restrictions before he even schedules a viewing or a showing so that's just the coolest thing and and also i want to mention one more thing about jason before we launch in, which is that one of the things that we hear uh, that I think is really cool and I think is really cool for um, just a real statement to Jason and also what I think is important in the pet industry in general is social responsibility. And Jason embodies that by giving 10% of every transaction commission to a charity of the client's choosing. That is just, you know, that's like a chills kind of thing. I mean, he's giving up 10% of his commission to a charity of the client's choosing. So with that, Jason Feldman, welcome to Pets Mean Business. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So we're going to take a break here in a couple of seconds, but I want to give people your website name and your Twitter handle. So if they want to check you out while they're listening, it's a good opportunity. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Actually, Jason, go ahead. Why don't you do that? Why don't you go ahead and give us your website name? Zuh. Sure. So you can, anyone can go visit ChicagoPetFriendlyRealEstate.com and it has a ton of information on there for you. And then your Twitter is at Jason Pet Realty, correct? Awesome. Before we get a break, let's just mention an upcoming event um, on Sunday, June 7th. Why don't you go ahead and talk about that real quick? So we have a great event. It's basically, it's, it's part networking, but majority of the event, I should say, at one hour of the event is actually going to be kind of like a little training seminar. We're going to talk about how to fundraise differently than the traditional way of fundraising. So we've invited a number of different nonprofits, 
specifically to kind of the smaller rescues, nonprofits, Mm -hmm. so they can learn how to take a for-profit business who wants to give back and cross-promote their services together. And on the tail end of that, when they do refer some business over to these for-profit companies, they can actually get either a referral fee or typically it's kind of like a donation to the nonprofit just for either doing business with them or sending their current donors business. That's great. I love it. And um, where can people find information about that? That actually you can find on Eventbrite by just doing a quick search under fundraising differently, or you can go onto my Facebook page, um, to the event page on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com backslash Chicago Pet Friendly, and take a look at that event, and you can link also there to the event bright for a reservation. All right, and Jason, we'll make sure that we put that out there separately from, Thanks. you know, we obviously will present the podcast and social, you know, throughout our social media networks, but we'll make sure we pull that out and we'll advertise that for you, um, both uh, between, you know, our Pet Life Radio Network and then also with Fetch Find and our other entities. So we'll make sure that we get the word out there for you. Okay, on that note, we're going to go ahead and take a quick sponsor break and uh, we'll be back to start our really interesting conversation with the one and only Mr. Jason Feldman. We'll be right back. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Tired of wasting money on giant boxes of litter that don't work and don't last? Switch to World's Best Cat Litter, the only litter with concentrated power. So even a small bag lasts one cat 30 days. Outstanding odor control, quick clumping, lightweight. It's even flushable. World's Best Cat Litter. Everything else is just litter. Find it near you at www.itsnotjustlitter.com. That's www.itsnotjustlitter.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Hey guys, we're back. We're back with Jason Feldman. This is Jamie Migdahl, your host for Pets Mean Business on Pet Life Radio Network. And today we're talking about the really interesting approach that Jason takes with real estate. Um, as I mentioned before the break, Jason has a website and a focus on helping people find real estate within who own pets. So that's Chicago Pet Friendly Real Estate.com. So, Jason, welcome again. And uh, you. happy. Yeah, you're welcome, of course, and happy you're here. So, let's talk about, again, I really want to focus our conversation on obviously talking about what you do because it's really interesting. And I think people are going to find it really interesting, but also talking about how you came to this. You know, a lot of people, either they're entrepreneurs or they're working somewhere else and they fantasize about working with animals or working in the animal industry. How did you get to the place where this became a reality for you. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, it kind of goes back a little bit more to my childhood. And I grew up in a house that had lots of pets, primarily large dogs. My parents loved to have Dobermans. We had cats as well. So our house was always full of animals. Eventually, when I got married, we also had bunny rabbits. We had birds. We had hamsters, et cetera, et cetera. So I've always been surrounded by animals, and I wasn't quite sure what I could do with that, nor did I even really think about that. Eventually, I decided, having pretty much grown up in Chicago since the early 1980s, that I could take that knowledge of Chicago and apply it to making a real difference in people's lives. Hmm. And I kind of backed into real estate at that stage. So this is really interesting because I feel like a lot of people in the industry have a similar origin story of their childhood and the pets in their childhood having some significant impact on them and not knowing exactly, not even like really knowing that they're going to work with animals in their adult life, but like having having some sense of comfort around pets and having some kind of back of mind intuition. Is that the case for you? Did you did you have some of those similar feelings or did this just kind of come together in a different way? 
it just kind of came together in a different way. I got into real estate primarily because as I was reaching my late 30s, I really wanted to figure out how to make a difference in people's lives other than what I had, was previously doing sitting behind a computer. And so I decided to go into real estate for a number of different reasons. You know, one of those, of course, knowing Chicago extremely well, another because my mother is an architect. And as I got really deep into the rewarding part of, of real estate, and that reporting part obviously is helping someone sell their home or buy their home and knowing that they will remember me as that as the person who kind of helped them build their roots. For example, I, I helped newlyweds find their home together. And just mm-hmm. knowing that they were going to start their family there together was extremely satisfying. Where the dog part and the pet part really came, you know, kind of hit me by, you know, saying of getting hit in the face by a two by four. Mm-hmm. That happened when I was that happened when I was actually selling a, a condo here in Chicago. And not once, but twice, I had a family come in who was just absolutely in love with with the place. One in particular was they went to the kitchen counter and they said, we love this place. We want this place. And then the next sentence that came out of their mind was this. And these are probably not the correct pet names, but they said, Fluffy and Spike are going to love it here. (laughs) I'm sure it wasn't like, Fluffy and Spike. Right? right. I'm sure it wasn't. Although, that's okay. I, you know what? That's okay. You're giving some texture to the story. I love that yeah. you just ad libbed that. That was awesome. And although I have to tell you, my parents named their dogs pretty funny. So, Fluffy and Spike, I'm like, oh, really? Who's Fluffy and Spike? And uh, <laughs> the mother said, oh, those are our two chihuahuas. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's great. Except, as I look over at the agent who brought them in, that did you know that they only allow one dog per mm-hmm. unit? Mm-hmm. The disappointment on their face was identical to a disappointment on someone's face when they realize they can't afford a property. Wow, the that's deal, the deal wow, was that's heavy. And they that's, walked out. Wow, that's really heavy, Jason. The way you just described that. I mean, that moment for you. So was it at that moment? Was that a real pivotal point for you when you saw that happen? Or were there other experiences that kind of mounted on top of that that brought you to pet-friendly real estate? That was pretty much the point. And as I started digging a little bit around into how difficult it is, not just to search for a property, but even from the realtor side for inputting the proper information into the system that allows buyers to find out where they can live is just not complete. And so it it, it was obvious that this was an area where there was a tremendous amount of pain for people and they didn't know how to go about, you know, resolving that. So what year was that, the fluffy and muffy story? What what year was that? That was only a couple years ago. So it was a couple of years ago. So have yeah. you seen, so, so, so just some background on me and some relatable history. I've been um, in the city for 20 some odd years, always obviously, I mean, not obviously, but always with at least one, actually with at least two dogs. I've never, ever lived anywhere without two, sometimes three, even four dogs of my own, throw an occasional cat and an occasional bird in there. And there you have the picture. And I've done both. I've both owned and I've rented all over the city, name a neighborhood, and I probably have lived there. And that's a whole other story in of itself. But it's always, I mean, it is is as the first layer of any consideration for a pet lover and for a pet owner, forget lover, I mean, that's the implied piece, mm-hmm. is it's got to be a place not only that accepts my dog or my animals, but that's going to be um, a good quality, that'll offer some good quality of life for them. So access to parks and good walking areas. So, sure. yeah, so I mean, I can totally, I have a personal relationship with the things that you do and the things that you're saying and talking about as a consumer. Tell me about some of the stories or maybe a story or that you were able to impact the outcome because of your perspective and and the way that you're approaching the pet-friendly lifestyle. I know I'm just putting you on the spot with that. Yeah, thanks for that. So (laughs) It's my pleasure. It's my job. Yeah, great. Um, (laughs) You can make it up if you want, by the way. Could you repeat the question (laughs) one more time for me? Totally. And by the way, you can like make it like an amalgam of like many stories, but like, you know, is there something that stands out in your mind? Even an example of a situation where because of your insight or your perspective that you save someone time, heartache, money, all three, something that you brought to the table that a real estate agent who doesn't have your passion or your lens could not have done. Sure. So because the data online is so incomplete, it is extremely frustrating for anyone who's looking for a pet-friendly building to live. We have 
from one building to the next completely different roles. Yep. Like one building will be two dogs up to 40 pounds each. Another one total will be... Total 40 pounds, right? Total 40 or, pounds. Right. Some, right. Will, some will be total 40 pounds, right? There are some that are like, okay, you can have one up to 150 pounds, but then the second one can only be 25 pounds. I mean, how there random. Are, how totally random, by the way. Yeah, completely it's random. Totally there, random. Are, there are even some luxury rental buildings that won't even allow a dog under the age of one years old. Can you imagine, like, discriminating against a puppy? What's wrong with these people? <laughs> that is hilarious, but yet not funny at all. I know. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I'm currently helping someone who's actually moving to Chicago. She's going to work at a, at a veterinary clinic. She's moving to Chicago from, I believe, from Atlanta. She has two dogs, both are mixed breeds, and a cat. And she wants to be within 30 minutes of, of the clinic. And she doesn't know anything about Chicago. And there's like one property available to her within 30 minutes. I mean, it's ridiculous because when I go and I do my searching online, I have to really pay attention to the information I put in, but I can't be too detailed because the other side is not putting in detailed information. So what I have to do is I have to do more of a general search which gives me a lot of options. And then I have to go one by one and contact every single agent. Well, that's my question. And you're actually taking me, we're we're nicely, we've got some nice synchronicity here because I'm I'm actually thinking about that right now. Is there ever a situation, has there been, or can you foresee one happening where you have the power or the ability to negotiate on behalf of your client about that pet restriction? So for example, you mentioned that some buildings won't take puppies under a year. Let's say the puppy is nine months old. Would it be you that goes to bat for that client or would you put it on the client to do that or would you just hope that no one looks and they don't know how old the dog is? How would you approach that or can you? Well, I'm pretty much a stickler for rules. So I do pick my battles. And if there are policies in a building that do not allow a dog over a certain weight, then I'll pretty much avoid it. I'll let my client know we need to move on and look at a different building. So as to not waste time. There are some gray areas. Yep. You know, there are some buildings that say no aggressive breeds allowed. So let's talk about that. Let's talk yeah. about that. That's a, You know, actually, we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and we're going to dive into that because that's such a heavy topic and super, what's the word when something is, what's that word, Jason? I'm going to uh, go with important. Controversial. One for controversial. Words. <laughs> no. Controversial. Con- let's do yeah, that one. It's super controversial. And I never even thought about when I was preparing for our conversation today, it never even dawned on me that, of course, you would have some interaction with breed specific legislation. So I really want to talk about that and hear your perspective perspective on that when we get back. And also, I love that I put you on the spot. Maybe I can do that again after the break. So with that, uh, yeah, totally can't wait. All right. So we're going to take a break. This is Jamie Migdahl, your host of Pets Mean Business on Pet Life Radio Network. We're talking with Jason Feldman, the pet guy as it relates to real estate in Chicago. And we will be right back. Hi, Jill. I see you and Bella are enjoying this lovely day as well. It's a perfect day for a walk. Isn't that right, Bella? And what a colorful ID tag you have, Bella. It certainly puts my Rusty's boring engraved tag to shame. Isn't it great? It's a dog tag art tag. Dog tag art? Yeah. Dog tag art makes the world's coolest pet ID tags. Pick from hundreds of cute designs or upload your photos or artwork to create a unique tag of your own. They even give you four lines of text on the back of the tag for important contact information. I love it! But do they hold up? We have to replace Rusty's metal tags so often because the information wears away. Dog tag art tags are some of the highest quality pet tags out there. They're made with super durable stainless steel. Your information is always legible and the tags are guaranteed for life. Well, I'm sold. Where can I get my dog tag art tag for Rusty? Dogtagart.com Sounds great! We can't wait to get online and get a tag of our own. Dogtagart.com We keep best friends together. Use the coupon code RADIO for a 25% discount off any tag. Active for Pets is a new wellness platform and app that helps pet parents save time and money on their vet bills. Stop paying for unnecessary vet treatments. Consult with a vet online. Get unlimited access to your pet's entire health history from any computer or smartphone with the Active for Pets app. Vaccinations, medications, test results, and more. Active 4 Pets gives you access to a team of expert vets for non-emergency care. Make an appointment before, during, or after office hours. Skip the waiting room and get a secure online vet consult on your schedule. 
Taking care of your pets is as easy as it gets with Active 4 Pets. Ready to try Active 4 Pets? Listeners get 40% off a one-year membership. To get this great offer, use promo code PETLIFE on the sign-up page of Active4Pets.com. That's A-C-T-I-V, the number 4, P-E-T-S dot com. Or call 888-512-2848. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jamie Migdahl, your host of Pets Mean Business on Pet Life Radio Network. And we are so excited today. We're having an awesome conversation, if I may say so myself, with Jason Feldman. For those of you who haven't yet caught up with who Jason is, if you just joined us, Jason is a real estate agent here in Chicago. He works with Related Realty. And part of that, he created this real interesting niche of working with people and their pets as far as it relates to finding real estate. So if you'd like to go ahead and pop over to his website, that is Chicago Pet Friendly Real Estate.com. And quick disclaimer that he doesn't do this outside of Chicago. So if you want to contact Jason and pick his brain about maybe agents in your area, I know that he's a really good guy and I'm going to go and offer him up. So, Jay, there you I go. I, just, I offered yeah. you up. You can contact All Jason right. at Twitter on his Twitter handle. It's at Jason Pet Realty. Hey, Jay, we didn't get your email. Will you go ahead and share that right now? Sure. It's pretty simple. It's Jason at Jason. FeldmanChicago.com. So it's F-E-L-D-M-A-N. And obviously, sure. those of you, uh, if you want to contact me, Jamie at PetLifeRadio.com, I can certainly hook you up with Jason as well. So we left um, before the break, we started talking about something that is top of mind for many pet owners and um, something that's been in the news on and off for, oh my God, decades, I think. Well, over a decade here in Chicago, really relevant topic nationally, not just here in Chicago, which is breed-specific legislation especially as it relates to housing and insurance and just kind of quality of life for folks when they're making a decision about where to go with their pet. Let me hear your perspective. Like, what are you seeing and what has been, tell me what you think about this. Well, I can't comment on, on any legislation that's done in the, in the city or the state, but what I can say is I don't like discrimination of any kind, whether it be for, with human beings or whether it be with pets. I think it's absolutely absurd that a family who has a loving Doberman, Pitbull, German Shepherd, Akita, et cetera, et cetera, is prohibited from living in a building. There have been, I grew up with Dobermans. They were the sweetest, sweetest dogs in the world. They wouldn't bite anyone unless someone decided to bite me. And I've also seen, you know, small dogs, and I won't go into any specific reads, but small <laughs> dogs that are just trying to take our ankles off, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, you so, know the, what, do you know the top three biters in the U.S.? Do you uh, know what they are? I, I believe the, the Dotsons are one of them. Dachshund, Chihuahua, and Jack Russell, or Parson Russell, Jack Parson, Parson, what have you. Yeah, they're three small dogs under 20 pounds, right. three top biters. That's exactly right. Thank what you. I learned something new today. I love I'm it. I'm so happy to share that with you. What? Those little S-H-I, you know, what's. <laughs> those little, <laughs> I love all of those breeds, of but course. oh my goodness, are they little pains in the butt. Some of them. What breeds do you come across most commonly that are frowned upon or that are prohibited from buildings that are most problematic? So obviously pit bulls or any mixed breed that has a pit in it is mm-hmm. definitely the, the sets off the huge flags. Okay. Uh, German Shepherds, Rottweilers, Dobermans, those tend to be the most common ones. There are buildings that will go on from there and just continue listing them out. But here's yep. where it gets really tricky also for my job. Yep. If you get a bill in that says no aggressive breeds, but they don't list them. Mm-hmm. And that was what I wanted to talk about. Who Who's making these decisions? Is it the board of directors? Is it the property manager? Who, in your opinion or in your experience, is at the helm of those of those choices? Of those well, decisions? if it's a condo building, then mm-hmm. it's the board actually goes ahead and institutes the policies. If it's a rental building, it's the, uh, I guess, the management property company. Management. Correct. Okay. And what about, so uh, getting a little bit deeper on that, what happens when you have a client who comes to you and says, I've got a dog and it's a lab? 
lab mix, and it's clearly a pit mix. But they're telling you it's a lab mix where they, you know, the rescue from which they adopted the animal, labeled it as a lab mix. All of their paperwork is lab mix from the veterinarian, and so on and so forth. But you, as a just a person, regardless of your depth of knowledge, looks at this dog and goes, "Oh my goodness, that is quite not the lab mix. Maybe ten percent or something." What do you do? Have you had that happen yet, where someone claims one breed, but you get a look and it is not that dog? What is that all about? What do you do? <laughs> well, I really do my best to get as much information up front as possible, right? And in some cases, I can't, I don't even get to see the dog. Well, that's my, yeah, and that's what I'm thinking, right? Because you're not, I mean, I know you do the pet questionnaire, which is awesome and incredible and such total standout service that you provide. But really, have you had, okay, I guess the question is, have you had the situation where someone does say, you know, this is a lab mix or what have you, and, and, and you move them in, and let's say it's a, let's say it's a leasing situation, and you've moved them in, and all of a sudden, um, it turns out, that the management company in this case says, listen, that ain't no lab mix, Mr. Smith. I'm knocking on wood on the wood. Okay, floor. I'm now knocking too. I'm going to knock has, too. Because it okay. hasn't happened. I'm knocking No, definitely. You. I try to weed. I really try to get my clients to own up for it right in the beginning because I tell them on the back end they're going to be in real trouble. Okay, so you have that with, conversation. With so yeah, you will absolutely. have that conversation. So do you have that conversation? So I'm your new client and I say, hey, Jason, I need to find a two-bedroom in Lakeview uh, for me and my lab mix. And you say, great. I know some great pet friendly buildings. You know, I've got a $3,000 a month budget. And you're like, great, I can totally do that. And and I fill out the profile and we have a little conversation about how much I love my dog. And maybe, you know, we I talk to you about where I got him and how wonderful he is. And we just move along. At what point in that conversation are you able to, or do you say, or is there a red flag that would kind of push you towards the conversation, I suppose, to say, are you sure it's a lab? We need to be real confident about this because of this building does have have some limitations. And will you say that as it relates to the building or as it relates to the person? Well, it's done in the initial interview with the buyer. And as soon as they say the word mix, I okay, have to got ask, it. <gasps> what is Jason, it? That's my question. See, you just did it. That's perfect. I was wondering what triggered that discussion. And it's yeah, when someone mix. says mix. So for you, you are experienced enough to know when someone says mix, you need to go a little bit deeper on that and find out exactly what kind of mix. Do you ever ask for photo evidence? Do you ever say, can Absolutely. I see photo? Oh, I love Absolutely. you. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, photos speak a thousand words. I mean, if I go ahead and they send me, you know, say they have a lab mix that, it's, that has, you know, Shepard in it. I'm like, does it look more like lab or more like Shepard? They say, oh, it definitely looks more like lab and I get it and it's got the snout of you know <laughs> and, and some mild coloration of a German Shepherd I'm like yeah this is not going to pass so much so oh, let's people. not waste time on seeing a property that won't allow uh, my gosh Jason I'll tell you I've been a dog trainer for oh I don't know 15 18 years I, you know I'm a certified pet dog trainer I don't train dogs anymore because I sold my dog training company in almost sense a few years ago and have since moved on to the digital space with fetch fine so I don't have that client interaction that I used to have but for you know for 15 years as a dog trainer I always loved 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 getting the questionnaire the intake form tell me about your dog you know this is before I would meet them as they were registering for classes or private lessons and I would look at the form you know of course I look at the form and then the dog shows up to class or I walk into their house and oh my goodness <laughs> Right? Mm-hmm. Wow, that is so not an Akita mix. It's, you know, it's a straight up Akita, no mix there. So yeah, it's always interesting when people, you know, listen, we all as animal lovers want to see our dog as we want to see them. That extends to so many different examples and circumstances. And it's hard, you know, especially in the day and age that we're living in where there is so much breed restriction and kind of breedism, if you will. So it's the fact that you're kind of at the, you have a really interesting lens on that is um, really cool. And I love your perspective on it. So speaking of that, so since you're obviously working with all these mixed breeds, I know that, and I mentioned at the very top of our show that you have a, a very charitable approach to how you do business as it relates to animals and your pet friendly real estate network. So I'd like to learn a little bit about that a little bit more. And maybe as you're talking about it, you can also provide some ideas of how other people may want to um, you know, do this with their own businesses, regardless of industry. So let's talk about how you came to this. So let's break this up into a couple of things. Sure. How do you do it? Talk to us about how, like, the, what's the execution on this? How do you do this? So the execution is actually quite simple. 
What I ask my clients when we begin working together is to start thinking about a charity that's very close to them because ultimately I'm going to donate 10% of my income from that transaction to a charity that they choose. And that's the most important part for me. It's my donation, so it makes me feel really good. But the best part of it is that they're choosing something. They're choosing a nonprofit that's important to them. So it makes them feel good. And so all in all, everyone's really, really happy. And it has a benefit to a nonprofit who, you know, might, they might be happy when they sell a couple t-shirts and make $12 off each t-shirt. When all of a sudden they may be getting a donation for 300, 600, 900, whatever 10% is of that deal. That's incredible, Jason. It really is incredible. Now, is that donation agree- arrangement or agreement only with your, is that across all of your real estate dealings or is that only as it yes. relates to pets? So no, definitely. Your- it's across the board. I'll, just one quick story. I closed yep. on a single family home in a very close suburb of Chicago just a couple of weeks ago. And I had let my client know about this, this program that I have. And so after we closed... And after she got over the shock of, you know, being a homeowner for a few days, I asked her, so where do you want the donation to go? And that donation was going to be over $600. And I asked, where would you like that to go? And she surprised me. She actually said, my father was passing away and he was in hospice care. And I'd really like the donation to go to that hospice care center, which is a nonprofit, because they took care of my father so well. And they took care of my kids while I was spending time with my father. So I was just floored. I'm like, that to me is what it's all about. This is where business and philanthropy should be going and not just with real estate, but within other businesses. We should have a charitable function with every one of our businesses that have that philanthropy aspect, that charitable giving. So it it just makes me so happy. And and I know someday when I look back at my career, my life, I'll be like, yep, I had a great son. I've had a great son and and I had a wonderful relationship with my wife and my family. And I'm not going to look back and be like, you know, I sold a hundred million dollars of real estate. I'm going to look back and say, I made a difference to hundreds of different charities that really needed those extra funds to help save more strays, to help tutor more children, to help feed the homeless. To me, that's what it's about. It's not about a dollar amount. So I'm just super excited about it. When I got that information from my client last week about where they want a donation to go to, I'm like, that's definitely I'm doing the right thing. You're awesome. You are just really inspiring. Just, uh, you know, there's not much more to say. You just summed everything up beautifully about life and, and career and how those two things should really come together and work together. And they're not separate entities at all. And that's, I think, what you've done very well is you've created a, a bridge between your professional life and your, and your personal aspirants. And I just, I have great admiration and great respect for you, Jason. Thanks. It took me a long time to get there, I have to tell you. <laughs> well, listen, you know what? It's getting there, right? The journey is always the journey and the arrival yeah. is the arrival. And then the new journey begins after you've arrived. That's and right. you're, you're clearly in that next step of the journey. And I just, I'm so glad to have met you and so glad to have this conversation with you and to be a part of, you know, your professional life in in some small way. It's very meaningful. I want to go ahead and just repeat your data so people can, if they've missed it at the top, then at least they can grab it now. Can you go ahead and just give your, um, give your website and your email one more time, please? Sure, absolutely. And thanks again for the opportunity. I really enjoyed this. So anyone can visit my website at chicagopetfriendlyrealestate.com. I am a real estate broker at Related Realty. It's an an excellent company here in Chicago. You can also find me on Facebook and I've got a Facebook business page. Just look under Chicago Pet Friendly. And my, uh, I guess my Twitter account is at Jason Pet Realty. Did you already give your email? Maybe I missed that. Did you say your email? No, I didn't. I forgot about that one. So my email is pretty simple. It's jason at jasonfeldman, F-E-L-D-M-A-N, chicago.com. Great. Okay. Thanks for the data. Okay, guys, you just heard an incredible interview with a really um, impressive, I would say young man, but I don't want to, I don't know what your age is, so I won't say that. I guess it's, I guess you did drop that you did this at the end of your 30s. So I'll assume that you're somewhere in your 40s. So this is an impressive man who is doing these um, very, yeah, of course, these really inspirational activities around real estate, right? You think of real estate and you certainly don't think of someone doing this sort 
of work and leaving this sort of legacy. So Jason, thank you for being my guest. You guys, yes, of course, you guys just listened to Pets Mean Business on Pet Life Radio. And I'm so happy to have taken up some of your day to day and have been a part of your life in some some small or bigger way. You can always find me and that's uh, Jamie and Jamie at PetLifeRadio.com. You can visit any of my, my page is JamieMigdahl.com. I run a couple of companies here in Chicago. One of them is FetchFind and that's FetchFind.com. We help we actually help people who want to work in the pet industry find opportunities. And I think, Jason, you're a part of that website. Am I correct? You got it. Yeah, Love see, it. look at that. It wasn't even, yeah, it's funny. I didn't even think about that until just now. So here we are, one big community doing all awesome sort of things, making money, donating money, being innovative. That's the pet industry for you. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com.